Scientists are very excited about new data, which suggests that we have just discovered a massive lake hiding under the ice in Antarctica. I know what you're thinking, so what, it's just a bunch of cold ice water. But no, researchers are particularly excited because of the possibility of discovering new life forms. Life forms that have existed for, I don't know, who knows, millions of years in isolation. In other words, there might be some pretty crazy stuff down there. And I'm excited. What do you think, Joe? You think no, this is cool? No, it's really exciting. It's not just a lake, there's, right? There's been speculation about lakes that we haven't discovered in Antarctica for quite some time. So to actually hear that one has been discovered, that's, that's really something. Right, and it's huge. Uh, it's, not, it's not the largest we've ever seen, right? It's, it's, it's nearly 62 miles long, though. That is pretty cool. And the fact that we know absolutely nothing about what's down there makes it all the more exciting. Um, now, we're talking about like the possibility of like living ancient life forms that haven't changed for millions of years or have adapted and evolved in such strange ways that we've never seen in a, any other place uh, on Earth. So we could potentially, you know, we're always talking about different planets and aliens. Well, we have aliens right here on Earth. It's just unbelievable, that whole, that whole idea. You know, it might be microbial life, you know, that's, that's, that's a possibility. That's what Russian scientists have found at other larger subglacial lakes as well. A DNA structure that they've seen nowhere else. Fine, it might just be microbial, but I'm kind of holding on to hope that it's like some more complex alien-like light form that somehow was able to exist in these very harsh <laughs> well, ecosystems. you know, it's interesting because obviously there's not much life in Antarctica today given the climate and the conditions. So I hate to burst the bubble, but there's a high probability that even millions or billions of years ago there wasn't much life there either. Um, but nonetheless, there are little creatures, bacteria, microforms that, that could have possibly back then uh, survived and thrived in those kind of climates. And who knows, maybe some of them were frozen underwater and still will be in perfect condition. Maybe we can even bring some of them back to life again. You know what they're doing with uh, DNA technology these days. And we recently bought uh, a frozen tardigrade that had been dead yeah. for 30 years, but frozen back to life. So who knows what they could do. But certainly uh, it will be interesting once they eventually get the technology to go digging down there and finding out if there really are any signs of prehistoric life that they could find down there. Yes. That is what I'm talking about because you know if you think about it, if you go back a million years, a few a few million years back, you know, Antarctica didn't look the way that it did now. You know, it could have been it could have been tropical. It could have been a completely different landscape. So what if we found all sorts of fossils down there from when it was a different you know environment, right? Again, we'd be discovering who knows different dinosaurs that we'd never ever ever seen before. But I'm holding on to that hope that there's some crazy creatures that are still alive down well, there. Don't you raid <laughs> on my subglacial lake parade. It's all about the technology, though. The problem is that uh, it is so difficult to get any large equipment into Antarctica. And that's why it's taken so long to make these kinds of discoveries. And we will keep on discovering more and more things. There's other even bigger lakes that have been speculated there. Uh, and even when you fly a plane into Antarctica, there's a very few types of planes that can even go uh, into the, the thick of it. There there are certain stations that, that uh, are set up there that larger planes and vehicles can get into. But when you're talking about the thick of Antarctica, right in the middle of nowhere, it's very hard to get anything that could carry the kind of equipment that they will need to go digging down there. So who knows how long this will actually take. Right. And it's, it's also, you know, a lot of people think, well, you just dig a hole, you go down there. Big deal. If we can dig through the earth, we can dig through ice. Well, the big difference is that ice shifts and it moves and it's a lot harder to get, you know, some long piece of machinery down there when we're talking about, you know, one, two, three miles thick uh, of permafrost that you have to go through, right? So that's, that's, that in itself is very crazy. So I guess we're gonna have to wait and see, but for now scientists are very excited about this really cool subglacial lake that they just found in Antarctica.